This is actually my first uh, first time ever doing a Zoom call. Oh, really? Yeah, man. I don't really. I ain't. I, I be in the. I be hitting, man. Like I just be hooping, trying to get it, trying to get it out the mud, man. I I didn't even know Zoom was a thing. Yeah, man. Ever since the, the pandemic hit, man, Zoom sort of to me took off. You know, what I mean, I know schools was using it, but you know, for me, I had to switch over from doing all the AAU and all of that stuff. So Zoom was the lick. I saw everybody jumping on it. Right. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. This is uh, this is definitely smooth. I see like my nieces and my nephews and everybody using it for school. So, uh, yeah, I'm usually like, you know, I'm I'm with it though. So, uh, what's been up, man? What's what's going on in the the trenches of uh, <laughs> the 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 kids, the admirals? Man, so you know, I'm, I'm always trying to make something happen, and so uh, man, I. I started this this is a show it's called uh, elite coaching so basically it's just really trying to create another platform you know what i mean like for for not only like guys like yourself but guys who are trying to get to a level you know what i mean overseas so this can be a platform for people like you who can get knowledge you know what i mean and show yeah. just share the story and just really have a voice no, you know no. what i mean so so I started this. Uh, of course, I have. I'm looking to expand another team out in uh, Texas. So right. next by next year, I have a program out in Texas, and man, it's just a lot. You know what I mean? I yeah. Make it to a real platform. You know what I mean? As you saw, for guys to hopefully be able to to make some kind of living or impact. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, doing this. So. So man, I see you everywhere, big fella. Yeah, man, it's 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 been a journey, man. Like, um, shit. Uh, where where did I? Honestly, the last time we chopped it up and we talked was I think at the Zeke end, and um, yep. And like that at that time, I had just signed a deal to go go overseas and play in in in, in Poland. And um, it was, a, I had a great okay. year. I ended up being the best player on my team that voted in Euro Cup. And we made it to, we made it to the final. I mean, almost to the finals, but I ruptured a, I ruptured a tendon in my foot. Uh, I rolled my ankle um, and I ruptured a tendon in my foot. So I was out. Um, it's crazy. I lost the championship to Aaron Broussard. You know who no. that is? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I lost the champ. Brucey's team won. Brucey's team won the championship. Oh wow! Yeah. So man, that's we were, we were, we were. You know, I went through that, man. And then, honestly, shit hit the fan um, this past year in Turkey because one, you know, it was a bad situation from the get go. But you know, my agent at the time, Alvin Snow, you know, he's been my yeah. agent since I started this shit in 2016, okay. you know, this pro career, this pro, um, this pro journey that I've had. And he's been solid. He's been great. But this, this pretty much last year, man, it's kind of, it, it, everything that I needed to see and everything that I needed to know about representation, about um, who's, who has your best interest, what is your best interest? What's, um, you know, what, like, what is going to go on in this situation? And I love Snow. Snow is my big brother. I have nothing bad to say about him. But when it comes to this business, it's different. You know what I'm saying? Because Snow is, a, uh, is an American-based agent. Snow don't come over the yes. water. Snow, has, Snow hasn't been um, to Europe since he left, you know, five, six, seven years, eight years ago. You know, like, so um, my thing with that is uh, I – like I had to understand that Snow's best interest for me wasn't going to be representing me while he was in the States. I was going to have to find an agent overseas, a big time agent, which I do have now in a big time. I have the number one sports agency in all of international sports um, wow. to, to like represent me. And so I, I went ahead and, you know, I fired Snow and I signed with this agency in the, the same day, literally the same day they got me a job in the, in the ACB. Oh. Like, really? he was like, he was like, you know, he was like, hey, man, I got a job for you. 30, give me 30 minutes. Called me back in 20, was like, hey, here's this contract. You know, we're going to sign the deal, so on and so forth. So, um, I mean, I didn't really sign the deal. I didn't get to sign the deal until, like, June um, 
I didn't really get to sign the deal until like June because uh, I didn't really get to sign the deal because of like taxes. And then, you know, when you fire your agent, you got to wait two weeks to, you know, hire somebody else. So I had to do it the legal, you know, the legal process way. But um, yeah, man, me and my girl, man, we out here in, you know, Madrid and, and, you know, just taking it day by day, man, just taking care of ourselves, staying healthy, trying to keep others, you know, safe and uh, out the way. And so, yeah, man, it's just, it's, it's, it's a journey, man. It's a journey. Like, like, like any, just life, life is a journey, not even basketball. Cause the, what I do overseas, everything that I do is like 10% basketball. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like basketball is the basketball is the, like I've, I've been basketball is a privilege, but it also, okay. when you are as, as good of a player as you know you are and, and you're around yourself and you surround yourself with the right things and the right situations, basketball is only 10% to me, 10 to 20% of what you experience overseas because you got to adapt to the culture. You have to adapt True. to the new style of play. You have to adapt yes. to, you know, you have to adapt to being away from your family, being 10, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 hours ahead of time, not being able to talk to your cousins, not being able to hang out with in the hood anymore. Cause that's what niggas miss, you know, excuse my language. I don't know if anybody can see this, but, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's what niggas, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what, that's what young men who see this overseas basketball thing as it. Okay. Prime example. I've been wanting to say this for the longest. Um, Cats who ain't never played real organized basketball, cats who in the hood, who are the hood stars and the, 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 the I'll say this, the kind of the wannies, you know, kind of like, like, you know, like the hood stars, <laughs> like the hood, the OG, the wannies, the hell of a basketball player. He's a great basketball player, but you, you spend yes. your life, you spend your life like, if, if it ain't enough money, I ain't going, or, or, um, no, no. you know, if it if it ain't the right situation, I ain't going. Or, you know, oh, he's not as good as me. Why is he getting as much as money as me? This shit is this shit is harder than the NBA. I've been on both sides. I played oh, for the I, I played for the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? I played yep. with the Lakers. I saw that. And then, and then now I've been overseas. I played in you know Iran, China, uh, Lebanon, all through Europe. I'm in Spain now. I played in Turkey, Poland, uh, fucking the Dominican Republic, uh, Canada. Like, I played basketball on every level in every league, except for EuroLeague, um, which is my next step. But I can tell you, okay. like, this, just just the, the those four things that I named off earlier are, the, are how you are to have success overseas. Because you just got to adapt. It's not okay. even about who. Nigga, you can hoop. Anybody can hoop. I can. I can go get. I can go get ten guys right now from Washington and bring them over here, and we can hoop. We can run motherfuckers off the board. But then when you get into that, you know, style of play, the system, you know, uh, rotations, and, and then you got, you got guys who got you know egos. Oh, I ain't coming out the game. Don't take me out. Oh, you know, like, you know, man, it's 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 so much to it. It's so much more than basketball, Ash. Like it's it's so much more than basketball. Basketball is just just this. Basketball is just it's nothing. So that is so real, bro. I mean, and that's what I'm saying. Just me, just going on tours, and that's what I try to tell people. You know what I mean? You know, I'm taking money, Jeff, money. I took a lot of the cats out of the hood overseas, and that was some of the biggest problems that I found. Oh, we can hoop with anybody, but it right. comes down. Like you said, the culture, being able to adjust to the game, the systems, all of these other objects that you're talking about that they end up, you know, end up failing or falling short. And so now I'm like, right. what can I do with you? You know what right. I mean? I got to find the next person that can really uh, adjust to this whole game and what it takes to play at this kind of stuff. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You no, know, that's, that's I think good. that... I think the biggest part, man, too, and, and uh, this is just uh, advice man to man, and I'm a mentor, you know okay. what I'm saying? Like, I help, I help so many young men. I help so many young kids from the hood, you know what I'm saying? Like, m everything, everything that was given to me from my AAU coaches, and from I give back. And one thing that I can say is that you can't, 
we can't save everybody, Ash. Like we can't help everybody. Yeah. Everybody's not. Every, you love them. Like you love the little homies. You love the little guys, and you know they. You know, like Coach Ash, man. Like you know, it's all love. Boo, 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 boo. But you only there yeah. for an hour, hour and a half, two hours a day, Ash. You only get to see them for two hours. <laughs> Niggas go home and, and start smoking weed. They are in the hood. Yeah. They get shot at. Mm -hmm. They stealing, rob. Like you can't, you can't control that. Yeah. But you gotta, you gotta know that. Like you can, you gonna be able to help, but you just can't help everybody. Cause my, like it'll drain you. It'll take you away from what your original goal was in the first place. And that's just helping people. That's just giving motherfuckers opportunities to be great. To yeah. to to have have this life of 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 riches and and have this life of things that you've never had before. And I'm not just, I, I, I speak for myself and for young African-American men, but for all minorities, all, all minorities right. that, that, that are going through the struggle. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's a little, it's a little homie, you know, little, little Hispanic homie down the street that is probably better than Derek Jeter. There's probably a little black boy down around the corner, probably better than Michael Porter Jr. There's probably another, you know, Asian kid around the corner that can swim faster than Michael Phelps. You know what I'm saying? And it's all about, it's all about, it's just all about who wants it, the who wants it the uh, the most, and how bad do you want it? Like, how bad do you want to work with me, or how bad do you want to just work for yourself and get right? Yeah. Now, that, that, that's honestly, Rob, that's something that I have to learn, you know what I mean, continue to learn is and, and accept. I can't help everybody, you know what I mean? Right. And, and people I've tried to help, and for whatever reason, it didn't work out. And, you know, I don't take it personal. I have to learn to be like, look, man, I did all I can, you know what I mean? And so I got to move on because there's other people that I know that uh, appreciate it and, and I want to yeah. help them, you know? Right, and, and so that's that's real talk, you know. What I mean, definitely being around a circle, you know, from the program to the CN to just you know, I mean, the circle in which we run in, and it's just like we got some movers, and then we got some hood, you know. What I mean, so yeah, that's the reality of the game. No, nah, man, I I like, I mean, I, that's why I said, man, it's it's so sad that like you you spend all that time around those events and those those things that happen and it's just like you see so much potential so much talent but like this generation uh, not and, and i could say my generation the the, the 94s and and because there's a few guys that's older than me from the 90s on like guys mentalities have changed to where like it's all about like getting fast money it's all about like like it's all about like it's all about the uh, what 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 is this word? I'm like, credibility. There you go, credibility. It's all about having street cred. It's all about okay, you the best yeah. basketball player in the hood, but you know what I'm saying you ain't riding around with no pistol. Okay, so now I got to go get a pistol. Oh, you ain't got no money, so now I'm robbing. Okay, so now you you ain't really robbing and shooting. Now I can kill somebody. Like it just it's a it's a cycle of 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 people hating on others to make them. To, to, to encourage them and to, to put things in their head to make them something they're not. And it's also about lost, being lost, being like lost in this world, not having any guidance, not having somebody you can turn to and, and, and ask for support or ask for help. Shit, it took me a long time to ask for help, bro. Like I had okay. some of the greatest mentors and, 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 and you could ever have in life, James Worthy, uh, Lorenzo oh, Romar, you know, Alvin Snow, like all the people I've had around me, like have been great yeah. mentors, but it's just like, when you come from what I'm cut from, asking for help is like, nope. nigga, asking for help is almost like, like snitching, like you just something yeah. you don't do. That's yeah. what it seems like when you a young kid and you a high head and you got your own, you know, your own, like your ego going and you got your own, you know, uh, 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 thought process of how life works and how it's going to work for you and how you're going to get over in it. Yeah, bro. Like, I, it's man, it took me, I was a square. I'll tell you this. I'll give you a little rundown of like my backstory. So when I turned 18, I moved out of my mom's house and I was a square. I'd never drank, never smoked. I'd never, oh, wow. nigga, I, I had an eight o'clock curfew as a senior in high school. My mama what? did not, my mama did not play 
And that's what hurt me. And that's what hurt me the most because I grew up in the hood. I grew up gang, like I grew up gang banging. And then I got my life together in high school is when my mom locked down on me. But when I was in seventh, eighth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I'm running the streets, doing, you know, nonsense or whatever. So when I turned 18, I rebelled against my mom because um, a lot of stuff that happened with my AAU and a lot of stuff that happened with my college recruitment went south. And okay. I always felt like my mom was like, I was young, immature, you know what I'm saying? And, and thought I, you know, was Mr. Big shit now. Cause I'm got my own bills, my own phone, ain't got to worry about motherfucking saying nothing. So I rebelled and I started, I should, I just start blowing every day. Like, Never right. smoked before a day in my life, but shit, as soon as I hit the weed, like, everything was good. So I lost myself, man. I lost myself at Fresno State, which lead, led me to get kicked out of there. I got to Washington, and, like, Romar, man, Romar, like, people don't, like, there's a lot of things coaches and, and people in the, in the in the you know, the ha- people that help you, they don't get enough credit for it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I was a drug addict, bro. Like, when I was at motherfucking Washington for about seven, eight months, about yeah. out of seven, eight months out of a year and a half, which is 18 months. So seven, seven months out of 18 months, nigga, I was on dope. Like, I'm partying yeah. every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm on coke. You know what I'm saying? We going to house parties. We doing, you know, wild shit. And I'm I'm going to class every day. I'm getting my work done. Like I got my grades. I'm not a dumbass. You know what I'm saying? And and, right. I, and, I, and that's one of the reasons why Washington kept me because all this happened in the first year, the year that I didn't even get to play. So they could have gave me a ticket and sent me home. But like they, you know what I'm saying? Romar helped me get it together, man. He stuck by me. He put me in rehab. He. You know what I'm no. saying? Make sure I had counseling, make sure, nigga, and I got right. And when I got right and I we started to excel, when we started to take off, I couldn't handle that. And everybody thought I was okay. Everybody thought like, oh, you know, he's passed all the shit. We went, we went 11 and 0, and I think we ended up losing to Stony Brook. And so we was like number 17 in the country. My birthday was January 5th. I got, I got removed from um i got removed from washington like january 26 27 so i went to the club and and i was partying with you know the seattle seahawks and the football players or whatever and you know like i just broke the rules i broke the rules that they gave me and um like they should they just let me go so now i'm back at ground zero now I got kicked out of Fresno State, UW, you know, what's my next move? My right. next move is to go hire an agent and, you know, um, and move on to this next step. And so I did that. So I hired an agent um, and I, I went to rehab again. I went to rehab this time for 45 days, like a whole in-house program or whatever. I went there for that amount of time. And then the the basketball started and that's kind of been my journey i went undrafted to the lakers um i got kicked out of there too like wow. bro like wow. la was just it was too much i was by myself actually like i was literally by myself like you know niggas niggas usually have like four or five guys in their entourage go everywhere they go. I'd never had that. I'd never had an entourage. Mm-hmm. I've never, I've never hung around the same. There's only, there's only two motherfuckers in Seattle that I kick it with all day, every day. That's Perk and Marv. Okay. Literally. Those are the only okay. two dudes that I like associate with that. I'm like, I'm in their face. We had, they had my birthday parties. I'm at their cousin's birthday. You know, I'm family, you know, those are my brothers. So okay. like, I've never had an entourage. So when I left, so when I was in LA, I was by myself. I'm nigga, I'm uh, I'm by myself with two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in cash. Like you know, okay. you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? No, none of my brothers, like my brothers didn't support me, you know what I'm saying? Like my mama, she was sick at the time, but she was just she was so money hungry and so greedy that when I told her no for the first time. Like when I told her no, wow. that like I just couldn't give her nothing. She just w- our relationship was strained. So now I'm really deep into the drugs. Now I'm really I'm in bro. I'm I'm in the hood with some. I'm in the hood. You know some some shit you see off of the movies. I'm in the hood 
playing professional basketball, sitting in the hood with, with, a, with a gun on my lap, shooting dice and doing drugs and shit. Like, I, shit, I had no business. I'm on the Los Angeles Lakers. Wow. And I'm doing this, yeah. I'm doing this every day. I'm, I'm pills, everything, like, you name it, I, I did it. And I, like, that shit broke me, bro. Like, once I got kicked off of there, once that opportunity was gone, tarnished, and soiled for the time being, like, that shit broke me. And I took, I took a break away from basketball. I took about seven months where I didn't pick up a rock. Seven months. Oh, didn't, wow. touch a, okay. didn't touch a basketball at all. You know, and, and okay. shit, snow, snow got me out the, gr- out the gutter, man. Like, I was homeless, living in Vegas, going from house to house. Sleeping in sleeping in abandoned houses, abandoned mansions and shit, finding them on uh, Craigslist, going to sleep in them and like shit. Snow got me a plane ticket to Seattle. I was up there with him for three weeks. He got me back in, in good shape. He got me back in health, like got me to the doctors, everything like and I started my pro career from there, man. And it's just it's been a great journey, bro. I, I've, I've had a great five going on six year career doing this thing. It's been amazing. Yeah. That's like. China, the real China. I'm talking about deep in the, the CPA China. You know what I'm saying? Iran in 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 the nice part. You know what I'm saying? Lebanon was it was love was crazy. You know, playing in Turkey, Istanbul, traveling with my girl, being able to take her from places. It's just been amazing, bro. And I'm, you know, out of all of this, like I'm just I'm blessed. I'm blessed to just even grace grace the, the the ground where i'm at like you know to walk here and be here bro like it's it's been a long journey like what i just gave you is a is a is a a, a, a summary this shit it gets wow. deeper it, we we can if we if you really want to make this a thing and make this something that um you know that you know mentoring talking and, and providing help then shit mm-hmm. we can really get deeper and i can i can really you know I can really sh- show you some things about me and my life and my experience. And I can tell others and show, like show them what it's like to be like, to be in my shoes because I, I personally, and I, and I'm like cocky about this. Like there's not a nigga okay. in the NBA that that's been through what I didn't been through. Not one player. Gotcha. I promise you there's not one. There's not, I mean, they probably some severity of it. Some, you know, they, you know, difference, but I, I just my my story is unique in its own from from high school to college to pro like and I'm still going and af, after all the stuff I just told you most guys listen most guys don't even make it after getting kicked out of their first school yeah like how many niggas have been sent home from junior college how many niggas have been sent home from D1s D2s just because they probably came late to practice or or they they got caught smoking weed one time you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, like, I've had, the, I've, I've just been fortunate, man. I've been fortunate and been blessed by God. Like, real talk. Man, now, I, I, the trip part is, I never knew, because I met you at the, at the pro, uh, was it about 2000? 2015. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I met you back then, and, and you know, I, Somewhat started to get to know you. We just saw the click. You know what I mean? I was like, I was a big rock. You know, I saw you doing your thing. You know, I was always trying to recruit you. You know, I just couldn't get you. You know, everybody attached you. You know what I mean? Yeah. But just always um, just really click. But I never knew your back end story because I'm not from Washington. You know what I yeah. mean? So, you know, Me either. Me either. <laughs> I'm, I'm from Cali. <laughs> I, just, so, I just, I just, just hopped on the I hopped on the Seattle scene and just never left because it's just so much love. You know what I'm saying? There's so many yeah. people. It's 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 the basketball, cool. like the basketball scene is amazing. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got NBA players that's taking care of the young fellas, that's coming and showing up at the gym, that's yeah. supporting the high schools, black black men empowering other black men. I'm I've I've mm-hmm. I've never seen yeah. I'm not in the streets in Seattle, so I've never seen the 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 hate and the the, the gun violence. I've never seen that. Mm-hmm. I've only seen the love. I've only been a part of the love. I've only been around Jamal Crawford and Nate and Isaiah and 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 they welcomed me with open arms. Um been around Snow, been around my Uncle Pete, like all the people that I've been around, it's just been all love. So why go back to Fresno where 
I got to carry a gun and I got to watch my back and I can't go over here because my brother, you know, from a different hood. So he beefing with them. Uh, like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't right. want that to be my life. Nobody wants, nobody wants to look over their shoulder every day. Nobody wants to, you know, not have no money and, and, and got to worry about when the next dollar going to come in. Like, I, I, I refuse that. I refuse to, to be mediocre. I refuse to be less than what, what God made me to be. And I just had, it took me a minute to understand it, but I got it now. That's for sure. That's definitely. Yeah, no, I agree. No, Seattle, that, that's how I felt like I made it. Once they, they showed me love, you know what I mean? It was like, because just to understand the circle, I mean, it's all the elite players, everybody who got resonates, who's the truth. When you step on the, on the court, it's like, man, we for real, for real, get it in. And so to right. get the love and recognition, not only as, you know, just playing, but as a business owner in that circle in Seattle, all of them, you know, allowed me to be a part of the program with the team and just really building with all the other playing in this weekend. And, and, and the guys, they made a state. That was the biggest part, too. I mean, we jumped on the scene and, you know, we was always in the, making it to the finals or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. And so it was just that love. And that's another reason why I constantly want to build platforms, you know what I mean, for our people just to be like, yo, how can we begin to educate? How can we begin to really make a difference? You know what I mean? Uh, with the generation coming up and, and with the platform. Because as you see, the first thing that ever happened in history, we, we see what's going on in the world, Black Lives Matter. You know right. what I mean? We know being black and what we grew up and, and how things is, but for now to see the world trying to get behind it and be like, at some point is enough is enough. Right. You know what I mean? And so I, that's that's just what it is. It's just man being accepted by, you know, everybody in Seattle and that brotherhood and then now moving forward and the, the country getting behind it. And just the thought of you, I can hit you up and say, yo, big brother. Want you show me some love? Let's get on the interview. And no second, you know, you didn't. You did ah, no. You was like, all right, man, let's do it. You know what I mean? That right there for somebody yeah. like myself, I don't have that big resume. I don't have all of this and that, but the love is real. You know what yeah, I mean? no, nah, it's all, and that's always what it has to be. That's why I said, like, I, I, I don't understand our people um, because I, I look at, and I, I don't mean to make this about, like, race or anything because I'm not this type of dude to get into that but I look at Jewish people I look at uh Arabic people I look at you know I look at people here overseas in Europe people are so locked in they're so you know yeah uh, yeah they're they're so they're so supportive they're so uh, uh um, um loving of one another and one of each other it's just like man it's so much like I hate, I hate, I hate. It's like we're in competition with with our with our with our own people. I'm in competition with my brother. My brother ain't ain't yep. shit, but I'm in competition with him because I'm making more money than him. So he's jealous. Why are you jealous? Why can't we have generational wealth? Why can't we build? Why can't we stay at mama all stay at mama house for five years, stack up some money, open up a business, and 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 and, and, and thrive? Why can't we? You know. Uh, why can't we put our hands together? You be the coach. I be the recruiter. You, why, like, why? There's so many things you can do. You can, man, this families create, like, it's just so much, man, that I, I want to say that I got to say that I just, it's, it's frustrating and I can't get it out sometimes, but I just, man, it's always going to be love without, that's what I, that my point is with me. Like, I'm not the type, like, I ain't never going to turn down a phone call. I ain't never going to turn down you know, talking to somebody and trying to help somebody. It's just, I, I, I got a vision for myself and where I see myself in the next five to six, seven years. And I think just being open arms, man, just being a, a great, just just being a great listener, being a, some approachable and being able to talk to, I can really change some people's lives. If not people's lives, one person's life. And that, that means that I, I serve my purpose. Man, I, I agree, and I definitely want to continue to, uh, like, have conversations and build, because, like, at the end of the day, like I said, it's, it's that mentor. I want to, the, the lack of knowledge, the Bible says, why our people perish. And so I go back and I, and I look at our community and say, man, trying to, what can we do? We need to come together, like what you're talking about. We need to come together and, and make a difference. And what does that look like in a startup? with people like yourself and me, and, you know, Ma, all of those guys we see that's constantly giving back. But now we sit down and begin to say, man, you don't have to make the same mistakes. 
You don't have right. to prove, you don't have to do this and do that to be great. You know what I mean? So, man, no, I, I, I definitely agree. And, and I love uh, man, what you're talking about. And so, man, before we get off, man, so I'm one of those, tell me some of your, like, underground, like, music. You know what I mean? Favorite music you may listen to that's not mainstream. You know what I mean? Uh, some things, you know, we got our own culture. We talk, talk about hooping. You know, you got different things that, that we listen to. It's not always who's on, I guess, who's on the radio. But if you got any any artists that you may listen to that may not be mainstream? Um, honestly, I, like, for myself, like, I'm not really into, like, the, you know, the SoundCloud rappers or the, uh, you know, that type of thing. I'm old school, man. Like, all my underground music is, like, E-40 and Mac Dre and, and, okay. and, 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 you know, the West Side Connection and, and like things that I grew up on, man, like, like music that, that, that spoke about, that spoke substance about growing up in the hood, that, that spoke about, you know what I'm saying, beating the struggle, going to school. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm definitely into the new music, but like, I'm, I'm a mainstream guy. I'm like a young thug, gonna, little baby, you know, all the music that bop, you know, like, that's what I'm listening to. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 okay, I, I, okay. I'll, be, I'll be honest with you about that like I SoundCloud rappers and all them dudes that be trying to you know push their music on me I just be like man I, I, I always you know pray for people and I pray for them but it just ain't gonna happen here I can't you know I can't <laughs> so you're over in uh, Spain right now right Madrid yes sir Madrid, okay. And so, if your season is going. It's yeah, so right I mean, now. we practice. Our, our first scrimmage is uh, actually Wednesday uh, against another team here in Madrid uh, called Estudiantes. They're one of the top clubs in in all of uh, they're one of the top clubs in all of Europe, history wise. Um, okay. But yeah, we our it's it's all so far, man. We got a we we've had a lot of COVID testing done on us, and we just. We got a social distance and stand out of the way, but um, yeah, man, the season's on. Shit, I get my, I need my first check for sure. I've been down for a few months. <laughs> but, yeah. And that's the thing. And listen, this is going to be the biggest thing that, as mentors and as people who who have responsibilities in life, is financial stability, right. financial balance. Right. That is literally. I promise you, young men, like, if you didn't have to worry about a dollar, like, like you think about it, when we were young, between the ages of 8 and 17 when we were playing basketball, we never paid for anything. We never had any words. We were so good at right. basketball, all we had to do was play basketball. But when, when you turn 18 and when you start collecting bills and when you start got to pay bills and if you got a kid, you got to do you got to have financial stability. Because if you don't have that, then you can't think straight. You can't be the best yeah. basketball player you're thinking about because now, oh, yeah, baby ain't got no diapers. Oh, shit, we finna go rob or steal or, or no, hit a lick. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, you got to, like, you got to at all times, like, have everything else set up. To, so all you got to do is worry about hooping. That's all I worry about right now is hooping. Worrying about helping my girl, you know, get ready, you know, to start back school and hooping. I, I do that. Like, that's it. And I'm and I'm now I'm financially stable. I'm for the first time. This will be the first year in my whole life that I've ever had the ends and the means to to do right by them. Like to 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 invest my money to to help out my family, the ones that are trying to help themselves. Um, just everything, man. Just find like just that financial part is the biggest part of this whole thing. Got you. Now that that's that's real talk right there. That's that's what uh, folks don't understand. You know what I mean? When Uber is or just life period. When life is out of balance, man, it's it's hard to do what you you know love to do and what they're paying you to do. You know what I mean? Because right. you got to take uh, the, the home front first. You know what I mean? When it's all said and done. And so you know, but uh, yeah, man, we definitely gonna get it in again. I, I know I'm gonna let you get some rest. I, I thank you for taking this time if it's uh definitely uh if you have instagram or anything like that that cats can follow you you know what i mean yeah. no i should all i got is twitter all i got is twitter and uh and facebook and i got you on facebook so 
Uh, I'm okay. pretty sure I got okay. you on on Twitter. If you got Twitter, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. You got the yes, Admirals page, right? Sir. It's that. You got it under the Kids Have yes, Admirals page, right? Yeah, I got yeah. it. I'm pretty sure yes. I follow you. Okay. Okay. So yeah, definitely. When we get, well, I'm most likely talk to you uh, offline. You know what I mean? While you're over there, just like we always do. But definitely yeah. come back to town. Hopefully, the virus will be somewhat controlled where we can get out and do something. But oh, no, I'm, I'm with that, brother. I'm definitely with that, man. And I appreciate you giving me the call and giving me the you giving me your time and everything, man. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, sounds good, Big Rob. Hey, that's the wishes over there. All right, brother. Talk to you later. Okay.